hunting gals, but welcome back to this section called The Gal, where we will talk about scripture and I will read from scripture. Now first of all, before we do that, let's have a small prayer and let's ask God to shed his blessing on this word that we are about to get into and that it will reach people's hearts and minds. Okay? Our Father, I want to thank you for your precious Son, Christ, Jesus. He who died on the cross to take my sins. He who became the bridge between you and us. Father, I ask you to bless this word and to touch the hearts and minds of our politicians who are leading us down a dark path. Father, they're trying to rip you out of us. They hate you, therefore they are attacking us. They're talking now about wanting to put Christians behind bars just for the sole purpose of preaching or even praying. The Father, if this is the case, so let it be. However, we still ask that you will touch everybody who hears this word. You will touch their hearts, their souls, and their minds, and open up their hearts. Not only to you, Father, but to what's going on in this country. Because, Father, you said it way back when, and it's so taking place today. But, I pray that we can all come together and learn not only to respect one another, but patience as well. And this can only be done by those who have accepted your Son, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior. So Father, we pray that this word touches people's hearts and minds and that your Son will then become a part of their life. And it will change politicians' minds and our, in their hearts for a better place for all mankind. In Jesus' precious name I pray, I ask, and I receive. Amen. Now folks, what we have here is some craziness that is actually going on. But let me take a second because my cats have went and done something, knocked something over. I don't know what it is and I'll be right back. Okay folks, I'm sorry about that. But what the cats had done is got a hold of one of my punches. Alright, so let's try to get this adjusted a little bit better for us. Alright, alright. There we go, got some good light right there to come down and light upon the Holy Bible, son. And first, what we're going to start at is Second Chronicles chapter 14, verse 7. I put my marker right up here. Now, chapter 14, verse 7 says this, Therefore he said to Judah, Let us build these cities and make walls around them and towers, gates, and bars while the land is yet before us because we have sought the Lord our God. We have sought Him and He has given us rest on every side. You know, that makes a point right there about 
what is actually going on. Okay? They sought the Lord. They sought Him out. They sought His guidance, His divine wisdom. And He said, build the walls. Sounds good, don't it? I mean, that's something I can totally get into. Is getting walls built. You know? So now, let's go to Psalms, chapter 51, verse 18. Do good in your good. Now this is a prayer, okay? Do good in your good. Okay? Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Hmm. Let's read verse 19. Then you shall be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then they shall offer bulls on your altar. Now, why would God condone this? The building of walls. Why would God sit there and say, Hey, you need to do this. You need to get this done. Now, why would God say to do that? Because for one, what does your privacy fence do at your house? Gives you privacy, right? They're like six foot tall. Some some are like seven foot tall. You just defend it. But it keeps peering eyes and people from going over there. It makes a border, right? One that you know is there and you do not cross it. That's part of a fencing. Same way with the wall. If the wall is there, you know you do not cross it. Alright? You don't do that. You know you ain't supposed to be there. So why are you doing that? If you do go through, it's like, hmm, breaking and entering. You're a thief. That's what walls do. They offer security. They offer protection for the people. And now, if we had these walls today, I wonder how many young college students and university students wouldn't be unalive right now. I wonder how many families would not be grieving I wonder how many police officers would not be getting attacked by, you know, people that are not from here. But anyways, let's go to Numbers, chapter 35, verses 11 to 28. Yes, I wrote it down so I didn't... Mess it up. Numbers, chapter 35. Get to verse 11 here. Alright. Here we go. Then you shall appoint cities to be said cities of refuge for you, that the manslayer who kills any person accidentally may flee there. They shall be cities of refuge for you from the avenger, that the manslayer may not die until he stands before the congregation in judgment. And of the cities which you give, you shall have six cities of refuge. Verse 14. 
You shall appoint three cities on the side of Jordan, the left side. And three cities you shall appoint in the land of Canaan, on the right side of the Jordan. Okay? Which will be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be for refuge for the children of Israel. For the stranger and for the sojourner among them, that anyone who kills a person accidentally may flee there. But if he strikes him with an iron implement so that he dies, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he strikes him with a stone in the hand by which one could die, and he does die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Now, this is going on sanctuary cities. Now, what is this here sanctuary cities for? For those who have accidentally killed somebody, that they may go into one of these here six cities, and I'll tell you the name of them because I wrote the names down too, okay? On the left bank of the Jordan River, which would be the east side, you have Golan, Ramoth, and Bosser, B-O-S-E-R. That's the three on the east side, the left bank of the Jordan River. Now on the right side of the Jordan River, you have Kadesh, Shaddam, or something like that, and Hebron. Now those are sanctuary cities. Now, here in America, we have what they call sanctuary cities. What murderers are running there from this country to escape judgment in these cities until their case is heard in court? There is none of them. None. <clears throat> How many people are hitting these here sanctuary cities from China, Russia, Turkey? 99% of them are from countries that hate us and that want us to collapse. So what does God say? about borders to protect his people. After all, ain't America based and bred and built on the precepts of Christianity? Before Congress, all of them that got together and everything else, George Washington, James Adams, you know, Everybody, before they all got there, Benjamin Franklin, you name them, okay? John Hancock, all of them. Before they even started business, the one thing they did is they made supplication to God, the almighty, true, one and only Father. The one who is in heaven. Now, America, we need to come back. We need to come back to God. Now, as you notice, Nehemiah talked to Judah and told him what was going on. <coughs> Excuse me. And when he they did, what did he say that they did? They sought the Lord. They prayed to God. 
They asked for his guidance, for his wisdom. And they waited silently until they got that answer. Whenever they did, Nehemiah, Nehemiah, however you say his name, Nehemiah, I'll just say it that way, or Nehemiah, whatever, he actually got permission from his Babylonian enslavers, if I'm correct, that's who it was, to go to Jerusalem with the crew and to rebuild the wall. Now, there's many reasons for walls. Walls to help hold up the roof. Walls to help keep people out of your property. Okay? Walls to keep back floods. What do you think dams are? Not only now are they, you know, thermal nuclear dams and hydroelectric dams and just regular straight dams. You know, they all do something. Okay? And that main thing they do is they wall up the water. They wall up the reserves. Same way with that home. We have gates on our fences to get in and out of. We got bars across our windows. Why is this? It's so that people cannot come in and cause you harm. Why ain't we doing this today? Why is it that it is such a hard thing to say, people of America, we care about you. But first, let's turn back to God. Let's ask God as a nation for forgiveness for everything we've done. Admit our sins to God. Seek His forgiveness. And then we'll be forgiven. Why can't we go back to that? Why can't we go back to when it was God the Father, Jesus the Christ, His church? And then it goes sideways because the household is perfectly aligned with the church. God, the Christ Jesus, the husband, the wife, the children. Now, that's not saying that the husband is the boss or the bully or the owner or the driver or the whatever you want to call it in your weird, demented minds. You know, the total head honcho. Because see, what Jesus tells the head of the house, he passes on to his wife. And guess what? She carries that out with the children. She takes care of the home and raises him children in Christ. The husband works until he cannot work no more to take care of that wife and those kids. Because back then, they didn't have just a child. They had children. God told them to be fruitful and multiply. Man, there were some people that had 20, 30 kids, 50 kids, 100 kids. He got away from that now. Why? Because we gave authority over to the government. Now we can take that back. You know how? You give all that authority over to God. Get out from behind the steering wheel. You can't drive. I can't drive. God, he knows how to drive. And he's darn well good at it. 
You don't think so. How are you made? He knows every in and out about you, every molecule, every whatever it is that makes us. He knows it. He made you. He made me. Today, folks, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes up unto the Father but by me. Whatever you ask of my Father in my name, believing that you have received it already, you shall receive it. Now, I pray a, lo I pray a lot about doing this, spreading the gospel. And I know it's quick, and I know it's short, and I do a lot of rambling on. But, I pray that you guys will have a blessed day. And may you turn to God and receive Him today. Receive Jesus the Christ as your Lord and Savior. And come back to the one that you turned your back on. Because He's standing there waiting. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears me and opens his door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Now with that being said, God bless. May all your days be glorious in Christ Jesus. Until next time, y'all have a good one.